Hello, I'm Carol Ambergy, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Artful Learning from lessons that I taught while teaching elementary school and elementary art grades K through fifth grade. So today's lesson is called Day and Night. Day and Night is primarily um, aimed at second and first graders, but that's not to say that your kindergartner or your third grader wouldn't enjoy the fun. So some of the lessons that you're going to learn today is, there's Mozzie, is about day and night for grades one and two. It's about understanding the Earth's rotation causes day and night. It also uses and identifies triangle, rectangle, square, and circle in our project. Most of my art lessons always include academic SOLs. So watch it to the end, and at the end, I hope you please subscribe. Thank you. So the first part of this lesson, I would start by asking the children if they maybe notice that the days seem to be shorter or depending on when you do this lesson, maybe the days are getting longer, and have that discussion with them. And then maybe they know something about the other side of the world and that if we are in daytime, the other side of the world is in darkness. Maybe they don't know that at all. A really good book to start with is an early nonfiction book called Day and Night by Robin Nelson. This uh, art project will also ge generate interest in the night sky, so you might love to read to your children Good Night Moon by Margaret Wise Brown or Papa, Please Get the Moon for Me by Eric Carle. All of these are excellent resources to support this lesson. Step one would be to read a story such as um, Day and Night, which is an early nonfiction book. And I would have with you a globe and a flashlight and possibly um, a ball for the sun. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to have the child hold the globe or the ball and demonstrate rotation. So if this is my earth, sorry, I don't have a globe, we're going to show rotation. On the other hand, we're going to leave our sun, we're going to leave our sun very stationary, very still. So, we're going to demonstrate rotation to talk about day and night. If this was really a globe, I've often taken a little um, flag on a toothpick and either um, put it on with some tape or um, putty or silly putty or something. and to turn it slowly to explain rotation. Okay. This will lead to a lot of discussion about daytime and nighttime. Hopefully the child will understand that when half of the earth is in daytime, the other half is in darkness. In the classroom, I also have these pictures that I like to use because it teaches so much. And in this picture, it generates a lot of discussion about where the nighttime part of the earth is, where the daytime part is, and to really help the children understand that this is taken from outer space. So they will see how this line divides, in this picture, day and night. Your older children should be able to identify Europe, Africa, Atlantic Ocean, and Asia over here. If they don't know that or haven't learned that yet, then by all means, you could add those labels yourself and talk about it. Older children should be able to figure out which way this line is moving from east to west. So this is, just happens to be, it looks like a nine by nine square. And what I, I had the kids do is just paint, paint, paint with uh, multiple coats, if you use something like this tempera cake or watercolor, you're going to need to do it a lot. For half of the paper is going to be yellow for daytime and the other half is going to be black. You can also use uh, liquid tempera paint as well. So let that dry. Now if you don't have paint, 
or you're just a parent or a teacher who doesn't have access to paint or doesn't want your child to use the paints for this project, this is an easy little alternative. Just take two pieces of construction paper, black and yellow, just like that. Does it matter which side? No, not at all, as long as they're uh, side by side. Okay, so the next step is they need to make their house. This is where the geometry part of the lesson comes in. And you can see here, well, I think it's not really a square, but it can be a square if you make it that way. So here we have a rectangle and a triangle put together. So I would have that, I just use a lot of things on old file folders to make tracers and then uh, I cut them out. And I would save my tracers in a place where I could use it for multiple and other lessons. All right, so for my lesson, I'm going, for my demonstration, I'm going to continue by using the painted paper. And I just cut out those two pieces together. Now, it will generate um, some conversation in a classroom that children will say, my house doesn't look like that at all. And that's fine too, if you wanna make it a little bit more of a rectangle and then put another triangle. The triangle helps because that way you get a second floor in your house. So what they're going to do is they can trace that on white paper, construction paper, drawing paper, or any color paper that they want to. But what's important is they're going to position this half in the daytime and half at night, just like that. All right, so once that's glued on, once this is glued on, half in the daytime and half at night, just like that, then we start customizing. Okay, and by customizing, I mean they're going to be adding on the door. I like to put the door in the middle because you'll see in a minute. And I put windows on both sides, maybe even in the middle. Maybe a window little windows in the attic like dormers. This generates a lot of vocabulary as well. Okay, so this is a big house, so I'm gonna put it actually a double door. Okay, and then I talked to them about what kinds of things they might see in their, what details they might see in their windows and I show them simply how to add a few little curtains or some window panes. Maybe they'd even like to put a lamp in there. Maybe they want shutters on their windows. All kinds of things. are free to color it. Now you can use crayons to color it. They'll show up nicely. You can use, these happen to be like little twistables. You can also use any kind of marker to color this. The important thing is these uh, windows at night may look very different than the windows that are in the daytime part of your house. So I let them tell me how that would be different. And they almost always come up with, oh, you might have lights on. So we're going to make those windows look yellow, a little yellow glow of light. This one looks like it's in the nighttime part too, as well as this. Now the kids will get really creative and they will put things like um, their, somebody in their family looking out they might do a window in the door. 
So just gonna have to be very, very creative with this part. So. Oh, looks like this window is half and half. So I guess since it may be getting dark, maybe I would have the light still on. So therefore we need to do that yellow too. This is a good time to show them if they live in a brick house or they want this to look like a brick house. So this is easy to do. Make a bunch of little rectangles with a little space in between to make it a brick house. And they can stagger these bricks. Do they have to do a brick house? No, of course not. But it's fun to explore the possibility. So this is what I would do. Um, maybe make more curtains over here. Maybe draw some faces from your family. Maybe this one has a valance that's hanging down from there. So that would be part two. Part three is to add whatever you want to down here. As far as outside things, you might want to do bushes. Um, I've had children add porches and garage on here. You could do that with, um, maybe here's a, a little porch over here on the side. Maybe some steps and a railing. So they're very creative about doing this. Then, For the nighttime sky, they can add a moon, maybe a crescent moon in the sky. I've had older children ask if, about constellations, and they actually do some constellations in there. Stars, little sticky stars work great too. Things in the nighttime sky. Over here. They could add things that they see in the daytime sky. Maybe they would want to add um, an airplane going through or birds. Maybe they want to put a tree over here that shows up better in the daytime than it would at night. Maybe a driveway even. So this is the daytime, the day and night project, which is a lot of fun. Um, I'll show you. When I was teaching, I put these together in a display in the in our gym at school, and I made it look like a great big house shape. But you can see here, here's some little uh, die cut flowers that somebody used. And you can see what a good job they did on their houses. So I think they'll enjoy this. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to Artful Learning and we'll see you next time.